Hello everyone. Today we're gonna look into some architecture. And here is an image you can see which we used for the Pegasus project as reference. And what we want to zoom into is to look at these buildings. They're quite simple. Their shapes are also quite simple. And we want to know what exactly means all this detail. How do we get from an input shape to something like this? What do we need to give as information for our building generation to actually make something which will look like this? And to understand this, to do this, we need to understand what type of detail does this uh, building exist out of. So I'm just going to draw over the simple shape right now, just so you can see that it's, yeah, it's a really a simple shape that defines the core of this building. Because we basically have a bunch of walls and we have two roof facades. And this really makes up the core of our building. Now, what we want to do is to figure out with this core shape, because that's what I imagine the user to put into the tool. How do we use this core shape to now go to a place where we have a building with all this detail? So let's go in here again, because what do we have? We have some, we have some windows, of course, which we actually want to place. That's a type of detail you could kind of isolate. We have just the facade itself with uh, a texture, for example, for all the beams going sideways. So let me also just show how that would look. That would be a placement with roughly this shape. If we can isolate this with uh, the direction of the wood beams, then we would be kind of safe. Now, we also have this ridge at the end of the roof, which is straight like this. Because we see that that is a type of information which only exists on one side. Which we also kind of need to isolate to figure out where do we need to place those, those sideway beams. And here we can start to think about a little bit how would we define this. Because what do we know of this place? What makes this edge of the roof, for example, different from this other edge of the roof? So if we make this white... Because this is also an edge of the roof, but this is different. So how do we define this? And one way to define this is if we look at this roof facade, we can have uh, a up line, which is horizontal, with a bottom line, which is horizontal. And what we care about is actually the diagonal line, which is either vertical or diagonal. So that's already a way how we can, if we can isolate this roof tile, we can now uh, separate the uh, the sides from the top and the bottom and understand that this is a place where we want to place those ridges, those sideways beams. All right, so we can already define that one. We'll go into a couple of these later right now just to show you and make you think a little bit about the detail in a way. How would we get this back to the input shapes? Now, what do we have more? We have, of course, have our... Uh, our facade and how do we define this facade because we already have we have our input shape but you can imagine that the ground is not really uh, even so we might have the a cutting plane which is the just basically our roll terrain and we will be using this to kind of cut off the bottom of our input box which is now sticking through the dirt but then you get this very irregular shape at the bottom so it's not actually straight it can be a very irregular shape um, how do we deal with this? One thing that I would like you to think about is how we can simplify this. So what I like to do is if I have this very irregular shape, even though it's a very simple shape at the first, uh, first glance, this irregularity at the bottom can yeah, create quite some complexity. And how you want to divide this up can become quite difficult. Uh, this is something I will dive into a little bit later with more uh, depth, but the basis of what we're going to be doing, if I grab another color, is that one thing which is very, very, uh, something you can build upon, or something which is very, uh, a pattern you can, which repeat itself quite often in architecture, is that we have these, you could draw a sideway line from here to there. And if you would be shooting points downwards, you would suddenly have a very simple shape, basically this top line that we have over here. And we could store all this information of where stuff should be going with 
an attribute which is basically a vector going downwards and pointing towards the bottom of uh, where it hits the ground. Now we have a very irregular shape saved inside of this line with a bunch of points. And that's something that we're going we'll, we'll be going over as that saves us a ton of complexity and really simplifies it a lot, which can help you to be very flexible in making a very cool generative system. So that's what we will be going over. You can also imagine that this is something you can use to place the windows and a whole bunch of other stuff. And uh, one more thing that you can uh, think about, like, let's go a little bit backwards. Uh, let's take a few steps back and let's have a look at this top uh, rim over here. This ridge of the building. Because um, this top ridge is also one which is pretty unique. Usually, like right now, this building doesn't really have anything uh, interesting. But usually when you look at the building uh, and you can see it over here in the background, there might be something that's kind of shutting down a lot of the, the gaps by being put uh, on top of it. And that's also detail that's placed in a certain way. And this is again then uh, gained by isolating which facades are actually the roof and then selecting a top ridge. All right. Um, this is all cool and fun, uh, but you also need to understand a little bit more about how do we go from just the facade to actually placing stuff in there. And for that, we're going to div dive into vectors. What are vectors and how can you set up a custom space? So let's dive into that.